if you take the steak or you grind it down and you make mince, you actually build more muscle from mince than you do from steak. So the important thing to know about protein is that if you're an omnivore and you eat meat and you eat all everything basically, then most of what you need, you're getting from your diet. If you can have dairy, dairy is a great way to kind of check. So if tonight the dinner is pasta with a red sauce, I know that there's not much protein there. I can, I can just add a glass of milk. Now what I've done is I've gotten myself uh, a protein that is not part of the meal, but I actually will still have enough protein from, from the diet. Or maybe I'll add some, I'll have a dessert with some Greek yogurt or something like that. So, so what you're trying to do with the protein, and it becomes more important again as we get older. Because as we get older, our stomachs become less acidic and we di don't digest and absorb as well. And so if I eat a steak now as a 55-year-old, that's going to have a different effect than when I was a 20-year-old. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's going to be harder for me to get those amino acids from the protein within that steak because my body doesn't break the steak down as quickly and as well. Um, Lou Fan Loon's done these beautiful studies where if you take the steak or you grind it down and you make mince, you actually build more muscle from mince than you do from steak. And the reason is that it's already broken down. Um, so if I'm thinking about this as an omnivore, I'm thinking one, am I really getting enough protein? Um, and then two, if I do feel like I have enough protein, either from pulses or from meats or from whatever the source is, then I'm pretty good with it. But as I get older, it becomes a little bit harder to get enough protein because, again, the protein is the most expensive nutrient. So that means that, um, that, means that when I'm eating, when I'm going to the supermarket, the meat is costing a lot more. So a lot of people, as they become older, especially as they, as they retire, they're going to take in less meat because it is the most expensive thing that you're getting from the grocery. So now the question is, what's that going to do to me? And if I'm older, I already need more protein because I don't digest and absorb as well, but I'm not eating as much of it because it's more expensive. Now that's when I might turn to something like a supplement that is a, that is a powder that ha that's relatively easy for me to get something in from. So, so those are some considerations. If you're somebody who is, who is a vegetarian or vegan, now you have to be really conscientious about this because, um, to get the same amount of protein, first of all, takes more from plants than it does from animals. And the protein within the plants is harder for our bodies to digest and absorb. It's one of the reasons why vegetarians tend to be a little bit smaller or a little bit smaller in muscle mass. They might still have, have, have good amounts of fat, but they're not going to have as much muscle mass because in that situation, even when it says on the side of the, the tin that, okay, this is... This is a tofu that's going to have this much protein in it. It's harder for our body to actually get out the protein from the tofu than it would be from, from say, dairy or a meat source. And so really, we're, we're thinking about supplementation when we have somebody who is vegetarian or vegan. And there you can use some of the nice, um, the proteins that are vegetarian or vegan proteins like pea or like soy. Most people are going for a pea-based protein now. That's a good quality protein. What's happened that's different within the protein powder that you get that pea protein powder, and why it's important for a vegetarian is that it's hydrolyzed. And what that means is it's already pre-broken down. It's like the equivalent of taking the steak and make it into the mint. I can now digest and absorb it better. And so for people who are vegetarian and vegan, I would suggest, especially as they get older, that they're adding supplemental protein in there. That's best illustrated by a study from Luke Van Loon out of Maastricht again, where he actually fed people um, the exact same number of calories and the exact same amount of protein from an omnivore meal, which was meat, potatoes, and um, applesauce. He is from the Netherlands, so that's kind of the standard meal. Or he gave them the same amount from a vegan source, beans and, and um, soy and things like that. And then he took biopsies from the muscle um, five hours later to see how much protein synthesis had changed. And what he found was that the people who ate the omnivore meal, they all increased their muscle protein synthesis. The people who ate the vegan meal didn't. Again, that's just saying that 
matched for calories, matched for protein, we don't digest and absorb from vegetables and plants as well as we do from animal sources. It's great for many aspects of health to be vegetarian um, because of cardiovascular issues or whatnot, but they then do probably want to think about getting something like a hydrolyzed pea protein so that they can actually increase the amount of, of available protein that they have.